Amigos, bienvenidos to one of my favorite cities in all of Mexico. The wonderful Querétaro. I want to share with you why I think you'll love living in this gem of the Mexican Bajío. The Bajío is this region in central Mexico now, because Querétaro is such a wonderful city, I want to take a different approach with this video and hone in on two of my favorite suburbs. I'm going to share with you a bit of the history, geography, lifestyle, things to do, rental examples, cost of living, shopping options, and so much more. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. So let's get started. Located to the north of the city of Santiago de Querétaro, are Jurica and Juriquilla. I'll go ahead and include the spelling of these suburbs in the description of this video. Now, both of these are small old towns that eventually became small suburbs within the metropolitan area of Querétaro. They are both great parts of one of the seven boroughs of Querétaro, which is named Santa Rosa Jaregui. Querétaro's municipality is the biggest and main social and economical district of the state. Despite their current modern look, these two areas are historically rich. They were once inhabited by the indigenous Chichimeca. But then this area grew rich in agricultural production during colonial times, and so it grew to what it is today. Jurica and Juriquilla distinct themselves for the diversity of what they offer. These two lovely communities are well known for being one of the quietest, most exclusive, and safest parts of the city. Here, you will find some of the nicest residential complexes, as well as a big financial district. But not only that, because they are home to several university campuses, these towns also offer a young vibe and a great nightlife. Easygoing and modern area that has nice wine bars, awesome views, or even if you want to be near the college action, art galleries, shopping centers, concert venues, and even sport arenas, these two Mexican suburbs in Querétaro are a top choice. Now you may be wondering how smooth the transition would be for you once you arrive to one of these suburbs. Well, overall, the city of Querétaro has experienced a lot of changes in the past few decades. And one of the most notable ones is the arrival of a lot of foreigners, not only from within Mexico, but from all over the world. It's not uncommon to find people from the United States, Canada, India, China, Japan, Europe, and everywhere. The reason behind this is due to a lot of different corporations bringing their headquarters and investing a lot in manufacturing plants in Querétaro. Querétaro is known as a leading state in Mexico for international industries. In fact, a lot of them have their headquarters or offices in Jurica and in Juriquilla. These and some other factors amount to two things. One is that it's turned the whole city into a really nice cosmopolitan place where you can find pretty much everything you would need and a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities. Another thing worth mentioning is that Jurica and Juriquilla are very close to the highways that take you to San Miguel de Allende, which, if you didn't know this, is well known as one of the most popular cities for retirees from all over the world, which is another reason that a lot of foreigners like living in Jurica or Juriquilla, because they can easily get to the beautiful city of San Miguel de Allende. Now, even though Mexico's language is Spanish, it's not uncommon to hear a lot of English spoken in Querétaro especially when you consider that there's a lot of foreigners living here from all over the world. Meet Liz. This is one of our recommended realtors in the Querétaro area. She's wonderful and has a lot of knowledge about the real estate market. Hello, hello! My name is Liz. Welcome to Querétaro City. Today, I'm going to show you one very nice neighborhood that we have in the city, Juriquilla. Now let's get into the particulars of each suburb. We're going to start with Juriquilla. As you can see, the land that makes up Juriquilla is a big chunk of the city's map. But don't feel intimidated, it's pretty easy to get around, and living here means you'll have everything that you could possibly need. 
Let's start with this neighborhood, or colonia as we call it in Mexico, of Santa Fe. Okay, there's a ton of options for grocery shopping, entertainment, restaurants, cafes, and lots of open and free public green spaces. One of the things that you'll notice right away is that the neighborhood is really pristine, it's clean, its parks are beautiful and well taken care of. The neighborhood has several parks around, so whether you want to go for a jog, walk your dog, or just sit in a quiet place to listen to the chirping of the birds and read a book, you can easily find it here. Now for dog lovers, there's even a big dog park where you can go walk your furry friends and unleash them while you have a nice chat with your neighbors. The overall infrastructure of this place is great and well preserved. It has wide streets, has nice sidewalks, and it makes it perfect for those who don't like crowded spaces. Oh, and we'll give it one more point because we didn't find a single pothole in the whole neighborhood. Now, if you want to live in this neighborhood, you can find rentals in the $17,000 to $25,000 a month range, which is in Mexican pesos. And they vary from everything from one bedroom to three bedroom homes. Another notable thing about Santa Fe is the Neighborhood Association, which is a group of neighbors that make sure that everything runs smoothly, they manage the maintenance of the parks, so they are always green, tidy, clean, as well as the overall security of the neighborhood. So you will constantly see officers patrolling the streets, either by the local police or by private security. So basically, you will be triple guarded since most of the housing projects here are gated communities. And even if you don't go out of your complex, there's still someone making sure that the residents are safe. And you were only a short minute drive to popular stores like HEB, Walmart, or a more authentic Mexican supermarket like Chedraui Selecto. Now, if you don't feel like cooking, there are several shopping centers, or as we know them, placitas, as we call them in Mexico, such as Plaza Juriquilla, in which you will find everything from Mexican bakeries, cafes, Korean food, sushi, coffee bars, wine bars, karaoke bar, and even a Denny's. But food is not the only thing that these placitas have to offer. You will also find pharmacies, gyms, banks, clinics, furniture stores, beauty supplies, boutiques, dance schools, and even a construction supply store for all you DIYers. Now let's move on to one of our favorite neighborhoods in Juriquilla, Villas del Mesón. This neighborhood is sitting right where it all started. It's where the old town of Juriquilla was founded with the Hacienda Juriquilla which is now a luxurious hotel. So if you're planning a scouting trip, you could stay in this colonial old building completely remodeled so it meets the needs of modern society. Now what's nice about this neighborhood are the open spaces, the ample roads, and not a lot of gated communities. Although you have the same sense of security, there's always local police patrolling, as well as private security companies that work in the area. There are two major differences from Santa Fe. There are less parks, but you have bigger homes here. The houses here tend to have larger backyards in case you're bringing your furry friends. You will fall in love with some of the houses that you'll see here. There's colonial style houses that give you that old hacienda feeling, as well as very modern and minimalistic constructions that feel very contemporary, very new. Now, I mentioned the golf club. Adding to that, Villas and Maison has a lake right in the middle of it. However, we do have to say that it's not open to the public and you do have to be a member of the yacht club that manages the area so you can get access. There's also an equestrian club within the neighborhood, a sports unit with its own baseball field, basketball court, and a full soccer field. And you will also find Juriquilla's own bull ring or Plaza de Toros, which is constantly used as a concert or show venue. So it's safe to say that Villas del Mesón is not only one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in the town of Juriquilla, but in the whole city of Querétaro. Now when it comes to the matter of keeping your pantry full, well this area has your back. You have everything you can possibly need. 
as well as in any colonia or any neighborhood, you'll find some small grocery stores within walking distance. However, for larger shopping trips, you'll find bigger supermarkets just a few minutes away, such as Fresco. It's a nice supermarket with a lot of national and imported products. And remember the placitas we talked about earlier? Well, you'll find a lot of them in the outskirts of this neighborhood. These little shopping centers are great places to find more specific things without having to go downtown or some other place in the city. There's a lot of options of restaurants, pharmacies, clinics, hospitals, butcher shops, organic markets, you name it. And if that's not enough and you say you want to support the local producers or maybe have a more direct impact on the local economy, or you want to have a more authentic Mexican market experience, just head on to the old Hacienda, which is now the Hotel Mission Grand Juriquilla. Here, you will find a great market. It has fruits, vegetables, meat, some delicious street food, and it's all from local producers. Rentals in Villas and Mason typically go for 25,000 and up to 90,000 pesos a month, with most homes closer to the 40,000 peso a month rental price. That's about 2,000 US dollars a month. This next neighborhood is known as Cumbres del Lago. It's a suburb that is a gated and has some smaller gated communities right inside of it. And you have a lot of other shopping centers that offer pretty much all you could possibly need from grocery shopping, entertainment, movie theaters, restaurants, gyms, and all the other plazas we mentioned. Now here, most of the houses have their own design. There's a lot of really big houses with large backyards. It's a very pet friendly area. And as you can see, there are a lot of green areas and many of them are actually reserved for pets. And one of the perks of this neighborhood is its location. The whole complex is sitting on a hill. So you'll get wonderful views of the city pretty much from any part of the suburb. You can enjoy a wonderful sight while you have a casual walk or a casual stroll. We could say that it's other great plus is that since it's kind of a small suburb within the town or a small neighborhood within this suburb, meaning that you have shopping areas inside the same complex, you won't find yourself having to drive for anything. You could basically walk to all these things. There are two main malls inside of this neighborhood. One of them is Plaza del Lago and the other one is Plaza Central. And they offer a diversity of services and goods from grocery stores, spas, boutiques, barbershops, and well, you already know everything about these convenient small plazas. But if you want a big box supermarket or larger store, you're only about a 15 minute drive to one of those. Now Cumbres del Lago rentals are in all ranges and sizes. They start at about 16,000 pesos a month, all the way to 55,000 pesos a month. Are you ready to live in Curiquilla? Pick a place. But let's get into the neighboring suburb of Jurica. Hello, Mexico Relocation subscribers. We are in a neighborhood called Jurica. So let's start with this wonderful suburb known as Jurica, which is made up of two main parts. In one part, you'll find the industrial and retail part. For mall shoppers, you'll find two of the largest malls in Querétaro here, which are Antea Lifestyle Center and Uptown Center. And both of these malls are located within 10 minutes of Jurica and Juriquilla. The other half of Jurica represents the residential area. And we think you will love this place. Here, the streets are wide and in great condition. You do have some cobblestones which add to the old world charm, but this is a cosmopolitan town that provides all the commodities that modern lifestyle demands while it preserves its Mexican colonia style. You'll notice right away a sense of peacefulness in the streets. It's very quiet and it's a calm neighborhood with a lot of trees and great parks. There's some gated communities here, but they're not the norm. Some of the houses here take up a whole block, so they're pretty large. They have large backyards, which are perfect if you have pets or if you like to have Sunday barbecues. As you can tell, the architecture here is very diverse. You'll find all kinds of designs 
that I'm sure you'll fall in love with. As you can see, people in Querétaro have great taste. And because this tends to be one of the most exclusive neighborhoods, safety here is virtually a guarantee. You can find some groceries inside this residential area. There's local commerce scattered all around and some small shops within walking distance. But for bigger shopping trips, you can go to one of my favorite stores in all of Mexico, which is City Market. It's a really nice supermarket with all kinds of national and imported products. You can also shop at other familiar stores like Walmart, Sam's, and Office Depot. Rentals in Jurica range anywhere from 25,000 pesos a month all the way to 80,000 pesos a month. But as you can see, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now there's still more for you to see, so don't go anywhere. Now by now you're probably wondering what some of your cost of living expenses would be if you lived in Querétaro. For example, basic utilities. Now when it comes to utilities and basic services, you won't have a thing to worry about. As I mentioned more than once in this video, these suburbs are popular and there are a lot of middle and upper middle class residents here, as you could probably tell from the rental prices. Now with that in mind, you could probably assume that basic services such as water, electricity, internet, natural gas, and overall maintenance of your house are gonna be well covered and you won't find yourself lacking on any of these. Now being a semi-desertic area, it is sometimes hard to bring water to the city of Querétaro. Now this is solved by having a lot of water reserves and dams scattered around the state. In fact, the lake at Villas del Mason also works as a water reserve for the north district of the city. The company in charge of providing water is called CEA and you will get a good service all year round. Now prices may change depending on the zone that you're living in. Water service is a bit expensive by Mexican standards in these areas. For example, the average cost could be around 1,200 to 2,000 pesos a month, which is about 60 US dollars to 100 US dollars a month, especially if you end up renting a place where utilities are not covered. Now in Mexico, there's only one company providing electricity. In recent years, there's been some private enterprises that also distribute energy with the intention to open this market a bit more. But those are still small and most likely you will have to get your electricity from the famous CFE or CFE, which is a Federal Electricity Commission in Mexico. You can expect your bill to be around 1,500 to 2,000 pesos and this is paid every two months. So that makes a monthly average of about 1,000 pesos a month, which is about 50 US dollars. Keep in mind that many houses in central Mexico, including Querétaro, do not have air conditioning, and that's because it's not really necessary. Even being in a really dry area, temperatures don't usually get above 85 degrees Fahrenheit. In this case, if that seems too hot for you and you need air conditioning, then you can expect your electricity bill to go up. Querétaro has one major gas provider, which in comparison with other cities in Mexico is actually really convenient. The most common solution for most Mexican household is a gas tank in your house or a stationary one. You would call the provider or the company and either they come and fill it up or they get you a new tank. Now getting natural gas for cooking and boiling or making water hot is a bit different here in Querétaro. Unlike other cities in Mexico where you have to call the gas company and wait for the guy to come with a new tank or a host to refill your stationary um, gas, you actually just get a bill showing your consumption and the amount you have to pay. The average cost for this service is around 700 to 900 pesos a month in the area of Jurica and Juriquilla. And once again, it always depends on your usage and how many people live in your household. And what about internet? Well, there are three major internet providers in the city. Telmex, which is the largest provider not only in Querétaro, but in all of Mexico. There's also Izzy, which have been around for a decade now and they provide good service. And finally, Total Play, which is relatively new, but they have a good reputation for providing really good fiber optic internet in secluded areas where other companies don't really have access. Now, both Jurica and Juriquilla have fiber optic pretty much available in any one of its neighborhoods. 
So living here, you're pretty much guaranteed good internet speed. Now, you could find really cheap packages starting from 300 pesos a month, including internet and phone service. Just keep in mind that you get what you pay for. And if you work from home and internet is your tool, then you should probably invest in a bit of more speed. You can find packages with internet, phone, cable, and even some streaming services with up to one gigabytes per second for a price between 1,500 to 1,800 pesos a month. Now, we always get the question on house cleaning and hiring house help. And usually, a lot of households in Mexico have a cleaning person that come either a few times a week or less. Rates are between 400 to 800 pesos for a full day's work, depending on the size of the house and obviously what kinds of things they will do. If you live in a gated community, sometimes your maintenance provides gardening and some other services. Now, if you rent, don't forget to check out my video on the top questions you should be asking before signing a lease in Mexico. That way, there are no surprises like who will pay for the mantenimiento or the maintenance. Links are in the description of this video. So all in all, a very rough average for the cost of utilities and basic services should be somewhere around 9,500 pesos a month or about 500 US dollars. Not bad, huh? But what can you expect to pay for groceries in Mexico? Now, a fair estimate for a couple could be around 4,000 to 8,000 pesos for groceries a month. Obviously, the range depends on how often you shop for fruits and vegetables at the local mercados or markets versus going to the bigger stores like Chedraui. It also depends on how many personal items you get on a monthly basis, such as cleaning supplies, supplements, household goods, etc. Now, I do highly recommend shopping at different grocery stores. That way you find the ones that you like the most and the ones that have the best deals. Now, if you're into getting in touch with the local producers and making a big impact directly in your economy, then I suggest for a more Mexican experience that you shop at all kinds of mercados or markets around Mexico. A couple of them in Querétaro are Misión de San Francisco, where you will find the Tianguis Bosque de Agua, which translates to basically the forest of water, and they are open from 9 a.m to 2 p.m. on Wednesdays only. This particular market sells organic products, local farmers and producers bring their things to sell, and mostly you will find fruits, vegetables, meats, some cheeses, and other dairies. Prices are very reasonable, and you might actually save some money by shopping here. You might not find everything that you need here, but it is a good option for you to get your fruits and vegetables. There's also an organic market north of Juriquilla that opens Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's also a great option if you're really into taking care of the quality of your nutrition. Here you will also find mostly local farmers foods, lots of fruits, veggies, and seeds. Overall, a car may be needed from time to time to get around in Querétaro, and you can expect to pay about 20 pesos per liter of gasoline or 76 pesos per gallon, which is about four US dollars a gallon. Now, if you'd rather not drive, then there's always public transportation. Just keep in mind that public transportation services do tend to be more efficient when you live in the central parts of the city. When it comes to the outskirts, it can lack a little bit since there are not that many buses that go around. The cost of a bus ticket is around 11 pesos, which is actually quite high for Mexican standards, even though it might seem like a deal to you and me. When it comes to medical services, both of these suburbs offer a lot of options for you from pharmacies to first class hospitals. For example, if you need a routine checkup and maybe some lab work, you can get both of them done quickly without even having an appointment. You can expect to pay 50 pesos for a routine checkup and about a hundred, couple hundred pesos up to a couple thousand pesos for lab work, depending on the lab work you're getting. Now, if you have to see a specialist or have an emergency, there are some really nice and big clinics and hospitals in this area. One of them is the iconic building of Juriquilla, 
where the Moscati Hospital is. Here, you'll find a great number of specialists like oncology, pediatricians, cardiology, and everything in between. There's also the medical center, Jurica. This is a big hospital that offers great healthcare. You can find neurosurgery, plastic surgery, and a variety of other surgeons in this hospital. But don't think I forgot about nightlife. Now we have to be honest, Querétaro is not the greatest reference for nightlife, but that doesn't mean that you should consider it boring. It's just unlike other cities in Mexico, Querétaro tends to be more laid back and family oriented. But there are some decent nightlife bars and nightclubs in Jurica and Juriquilla. In fact, some of the most exclusive nightclubs are in this area. And because there are a lot of college students living in the city, there are a variety of bars, cafes, concerts, and all kinds of events happening year round. So what do you think about Jurica and Juriquilla? These are great communities in the heart of Querétaro where you'll be surrounded by parks, a good variety of amenities, a place where there are cultures from all over the world, world-class hospitals, great restaurants, and everything you could possibly need in a city. There are so many areas that we want to cover in Querétaro because it's truly a great place to consider for retirement, coming with a young family, whether you're a digital nomad, whether you're just using it as a home base to explore the rest of Mexico. It truly is an amazing state with so much biodiversity. It has great hiking, great outdoors, great weather, amazing shopping, good hospitals, proximity to some of the most beautiful towns like Peña de Bernal, San Miguel de Allende, wineries nearby. I mean, I could go on and on. I love Querétaro, but I want to hear from you. What areas would you like to see in the rest of Mexico? I am so thankful for you watching this video. I really hope you have liked it. I would love to know from you in the comments down below your honest thoughts about these two neighborhoods. I am Mariana, you are watching Mexico Relocation Guide, and I will see you in our next video.